Well, Amy, thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited. Good. Tell us a little bit about Amy. Who are you? Yes, well, I am um, Amy Noel Pool. You can follow me, yes, on Instagram and Twitter. I am actually Facebook, too. You can find me with that name. Um, but I'm from Orange County, born and raised. I uh, came from, you know, a home with two younger sisters, mm -hmm. a mom and a dad still together, have an awesome mm -hmm. marriage, so very thankful for that. And yeah, just total California girl through and through. And fun fact, we met on Twitter. Yes, we did. <laughs> when I lived in Florida, my pre-Las Vegas days, and oh, did, I just like tweeted you and we FaceTimed or Skyped? Um, we Skyped, like yeah. yeah. It like an hour-long Skype conversation. Yep, I And you knew we were going to be friends from that moment. Our it bonding so. of social media and the church, like, our passion for it. Exactly. <laughs> so I have a serious question for you, because we're just going to dive deep mm -hmm. fast. Yes. What's your favorite kind of coffee? Oh, gosh. You know, this is a question that's really near and dear to my heart. Naturally. Take it very seriously. Portola coffee, for sure. Okay, so for those of us mm -hmm. who don't know what Portola means, School us, what is that? All right, so Portola Coffee Lab is located in Orange County, okay. right by the beach. It's beautiful. Um, and it is a local third wave coffee um, company. You can order them online and everything. So you can have it shipped to you if you're not in California, okay. which I do. Um, but very cool. Uh, it's just really good pure coffee. It's mm -hmm. not burnt. Um, I don't know, some like really popular coffee places like Starbucks um, burn their coffee <laughs> beans purposely for that consistency mm. and they they really are connoisseurs of, mm. of the bean. So <laughs> that sounds really good. We might have to make a California trip or something. Please. <laughs> yeah, so you've mentioned California and obviously you and I are sitting in Las Vegas right now. Um, a couple months ago this summer you actually moved here. You want to walk us through that journey a little bit? What drew you to Vegas? Well, six months ago, I went through a really big change, um, kind of almost overnight. Within the span of two weeks, I ended a relationship. I, I mean, it was something I didn't foresee coming. Um, those doors just kind of shut abruptly. And with a broken heart, I came to Vegas and was um, actually visiting Emily and uh, God just started opening doors of opportunity and opening doors of healing. And I came here expecting, oh, I'm going to get healing mm -hmm. from a broken relationship where my future that I had been planning for months had just totally been chopped, you know. Mm -hmm. And he actually brought healing in more ways than one. I mean, healing mm -hmm. in uh, female friendships, healing in potential jobs. Wow. So, yeah. It's cool how sometimes the areas that we think we might need healing in one thing, so we pursue healing there. We end up getting healing in areas we don't even know we're kind of broken. Yeah. So crazy. It's, yeah, it was just, the whole thing has been just like a total God thing, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, and everything yeah. about Vegas has been just like healing and rejuvenating, and God's just totally used that. That's really cool. Yeah. So now that you live here, what's a day in the life of Amy look like? What's your job? What do you do at Central Christian Church? Like, what do you do? Well, I am a children's director at uh, one of our campuses in Summerlin, which is a very high family area, mm -hmm. so the perfect spot to be a children's director. Um, but every day is a new and hectic day. <laughs> I mean, I think part of being in ministry is embracing that. Um, yeah, I can do anything, or I do anything every day from event planning mm -hmm. to coordinating the weekend flow, we can okay. experience, I will sit down and pick out worship songs and do hand motions, okay. and I can get up on stage and lead That's worship. Awesome. <laughs> we don't have to sing to do that. Um, I do everything from writing curriculum to mm. uh, my, the most the, well, the thing that's biggest on my heart is shepherding our volunteers. Mm. And what I mean, mean by that is I really pour a lot of effort into connecting with them and taking them a step further on their journey because if I want them to lead out with our kids and mm -hmm. connect those kids to God and others yeah. then they need to feel that firm connection to God and know that they're loved and they are known by him and that he's like totally crazy passionate about yeah. them so that's a big thing on my heart that I do daily through emails and just connecting with my volunteers that is so cool 
So what would you say to someone who would love to be involved in kids ministry at their church or their local church? What should they do? They should sign up and volunteer. If you connect or contact any kids uh, director at any church, they would love to have you, mm -hmm. I'm sure. There's always a need yeah. there, and that's the best place to start. That's really cool. So as you dreamed about who you wanted to be, did you ever picture yourself <laughs> sitting where you are today doing what you're doing? Oh no, I pictured myself as a teacher in California in Orange County. Right now, probably like, I don't know, I probably would have been married or something with a kid, which is kind of creepy to think, or not creepy, crazy um, to think right now. Um, but no, and I think the crazy thing about that too is right now I can't look back and picture my life any other way because God has really united my passions and my abilities together. Mm. So no matter how far away or how distant I was uh, from God, I can never look back at a time and say I wasn't passionate about the church and I wasn't passionate about kids. Those mm -hmm. two passions always existed in my life. So that's really united. That's so cool. I love that. That's awesome. So what is the biggest thing that you're learning on the journey of becoming the Amy that God made you to be? Oh gosh. Um, you know, like I said, six months ago, like my, my life changed mm -hmm. overnight. It, like, yeah. Two weeks, it was just, you know, like, went from the future all being laid out and planned yeah. and planned by me, honestly, and, you know, mm -hmm. some other people, but not planned by God, to a future that was totally just up in the air. So I was standing there completely alone, mm -hmm. completely out of my comfort zone, like, well, what do I do now? Yeah. Um, and even moving here, I was completely out of my comfort zone. And the thing that God's really been teaching me mm. is that my strength is, well, I don't have strength, I'm weak. And in those moments when you're out of your comfort zone, you're completely weak, you're vulnerable, you're mm. just like feeling lost, you don't know where you are. And it's in those moments that if you lean on God, you really get that strength from Him. And yeah. so I realized my strength mm. is not from me. My strength moving here, totally not from me. People were telling me, you're so brave, you're so strong. No, it was all God. Yeah. Um, my strengths and abilities for, you know, the job that I'm in now, being a children's instructor, are totally not me. They're totally God. And the thing I've been learning is just really to lean and cling to His strength mm -hmm. and just let Him, that strength, flow through me. That's huge and really hard to do. Yes. Easier to, like, say <laughs> yes. over time and, like, live that. Oh, totally. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Like, so if we're sitting here mm -hmm. and you were giving me encouragement for the journey of me becoming Emily mm -hmm. and there was just some, like something you would want to share with me on that um, or to anyone really on their journey, mm -hmm. what what would that be? Oh, I would just really share to be true to yourself um, over the past couple years in dating and then in, you know, mm -hmm. dating and friendships through college and everything, yeah. you know, people like to speak out and tell you their personal opinion on how you should grow and how you should change. Yeah. And so I've gotten everything from you're too confident. You're not mm -hmm. confident enough. You're very insecure from like you're super sassy and it's annoying to your sass is amazing and wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Talk about mixed messages. Yeah, so <laughs> the thing that I've learned is just be true to you. Mm -hmm. God made you the way he made you for yeah. a reason. He loves you. He wants you to be that person. So don't change your mold for anyone else. Let God continue to shape you into who he wants you to be and let those experiences grow you but don't become i'm not gonna become less confident for somebody i'm not gonna become less sassy for yeah. someone i'm gonna use those strengths and abilities to bring encouragement to friends and instill confidence in my leaders that they yeah. are doing an awesome job i'm gonna mm -hmm. use those abilities for what god gave me to use them for absolutely being confidently yes. and sassy you. Yes, it's exactly. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and it shouldn't be any other way. No, nope. not all. No, it shouldn't. Well, thanks for sharing your story with us of and course. inviting us to be on the journey with you. That's awesome. Very honored. <laughs>